So hello to everybody. Thank you for, for joining us for the second seminar of the CNET MTP online seminar on uh, theoretical physics. Uh, I'm pleased that we are continuing with that and I hope that we will continue uh, this year. I hope that we will have another meeting in the March, but still we cannot announce, announce it. And um, it's my great pleasure to announce Professor Mirella Babalik from Bucharest, which will be the host of today's seminar. And uh, many thanks to Ignatius and to others who accept to be the second le lecturer in this queue of our online seminar. So Mirella, uh, it's your floor. Hey, hello everyone. It is a great pleasure for me to be the second host of this CNET MTP online seminar series. And I'm also very honored to introduce today our invited speaker, Professor Ignacio Santoniadis, who is very well known and much appreciated in the theoretical and particle physics community. But given that we may have today in the audience also some young people, graduate or PhD students who may not yet know him very well, I will start, start with uh, mentioning a few sec sentences on his uh, career and research activity. So uh, Professor Ignacio Santoniadis is a Greek theoretical physicist with an impressive international academic career. His uh, present affiliations are uh, Laboratoire de Physique Théorique et Haute Énergie, Sorbonne Université and uh, CNRS. He was a senior scientist at CERN for 14 years from 2000 to 2014, and also the head of the CERN theory unit between 2011 and 2014. He was also a professor at Ecole Polytechnique for 12 years from 97 2000 to 2009. He was and is a member in the panel of many evaluation committees for various international grants, which I will not enumerate at this point. Uh, his research activity spans from theoretical particle physics to conformal field theory, supersymmetry breaking, string theory, cosmology, and quantum gravity. Today, he will tell us about uh, challenges in particle physics and cosmology. So I was brief, but uh, and now, uh, Professor Antoniadis, you can start your presentation. I would like I first to, to, to have you. <laughs> I would like first to thank you for uh, the introduction and um, uh, for the invitation to be um, the speaker here. In the, uh, it may be that uh, um, uh, my talk could be it's colloquium style, so. It, must be, uh, for some people, should be uh, known everything, but for some others, maybe not, if you are young people and students. So let me share the screen. I guess you can see the... Yes. Okay. Uh, so the... Um, the main motivation, the start of, of this talk, is that uh, uh, would like a fundamental theory to find a fundamental theory of nature that uh, should be able to describe both uh, uh, phenomena in particle physics at uh, the microcosmos and at very at very short distances, and also phenomena at large distances in the universe and uh, cosmology. Uh, so, particle physics uh, this studies phenomena at very short distances and would like to find the structure of matter and fundamental forces. And the experimental tools are particle accelerators, which are uh, uh, like microscopes of today. So, the most powerful micro microscope today is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Uh, which is starting a new era of uh, RAN uh, with high luminosity in the, at 14 uh, uh, tera electron volt center of mass energy. At the same time, however, uh, uh, community discusses uh, the next project uh, because uh, pro uh, projects are, in particular physics are um, uh, 
uh, more and more uh, take more and more time and they're expensive and uh, 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 possibility that it is started to be discussed seriously is the next uh, circular collider of uh, about 100 TV tunnel. Uh, one project of this type is uh, at CERN, another project, uh, a similar project is in China. So this is the Lake of Geneva, this is LHC, and uh, that would be uh, the new tunnel would which, which go up to uh, the Salev uh, mountains here, past Salev and go to the other side. Then uh, uh, we have cosmology that, this, that studies uh, phenomena at very large distances and would like to deduce the evolution of the universe at very early times, a few seconds after the Big Bang, uh, by measuring the, uh, fluctuate, the temperature fluctuations in the sky. And uh, uh, the, the, like in uh, uh, for particle physics uh, experiment, uh, the most recent experiment, uh, which precise, which made precise measurements was uh, the Planck, uh, uh, were two experiments uh, on the Planck satellite mission that made uh, very precise uh, observations and measurements of the anisotropies uh, in the CMB. Uh, while uh, uh, there is a discussion of the next uh, mission of similar type, uh, uh, which probably will be uh, Euclid uh, from the European Science uh, Agency. Uh, however, observations from very far come from the very past, uh, since uh, uh, light takes many years to come to us. Uh, and therefore the images that we get uh, from very far observations are images when the universe was very small, very small and very hot, and therefore it was governed by the laws of uh, particle physics. This means that uh, uh, the accelerator experiments and co cosmological observations actually provide complementary formation for the same theory, for the same fundamental theory uh, that uh, should describe uh, both phenomena. Uh, so let me then go uh, to pass to the theory. On the particle physics, uh, we have the standard model of particle physics that describes uh, the three of the four known fundamental interactions. And it provides a very accurate description of microphysics uh, at present energies. Uh, this is perhaps the only paper that was uh, co-authored by the two experiments at CERN, the Atlas and CMS. Uh, after the observation of the new particle uh, that seems to uh, to have the same properties as the Higgs of the standard model, the scalar particle of the standard model. This had uh, f uh, more than 5,000 authors. So the, the standard model of uh, strong and electroweak forces, it's a quantum field theory. That means it is uh, based on uh, two main discoveries of the last century, which is uh, quantum mechanics and the special relativity. Uh, it is uh, uh, based on a principle of a symmetry principle, which is a local gauge invariance uh, under the U1 cross U2 cross U3 gauge group. And uh, it provides an accurate description of physics with at present energies with 17 parameters, which correspond to the uh, three strengths of the interaction, of the three interactions, plus the various masses. Uh, it has three sectors uh, of particles. One sector consists of the mediators of the gauge interactions, which are gauge bosons. Uh, that are described by this gauge group. And then there is the matter, which consists of uh, fermions, of so spin and half, which come into re three repetitions of uh, families of quarks and leptons. 
And finally, there is a sector that has been discovered by, let's see, recently, relatively recently, uh, that uh, contains a new scalar particle that and was postulated by Bright and Glad and Hicks uh, 50 years ago. So after the discovery, they got the Nobel Prize in 2013. Uh, then uh, going to the standard model of cosmology, uh, under the name of lambda CDM, lambda is a cosmological constant, CDM is called dark matter. Uh, this also uh, starts to uh, be precise and uh, be um, to, uh, confronted with uh, experimental observations. Uh, this uh, picture actually is a harmonic uh, analysis of uh, the temperature and isotropies from the observation of the sky. At the, uh, that's the angular scale, and that is the temperature fluctuations. And uh, it was first uh, uh, designed by, uh, studied, proposed by, Je by James Peebles, who got the Nobel Prize 2019, uh, together with um, uh, exo exoplanets. Uh, this uh, prize comes say, eight, eight years after the Nobel Prize for the Dark Energy. And more recently, uh, uh, we have the uh, discovery of the gravitational waves, which will start a new era of, of astronomy uh, based on a, a new messenger, which are gravitational waves, uh, besides uh, photons and neutrinos that were used up to now. Unlike uh, the model of particle physics, the standard model of particle physics, which is every uh, constituent, uh, every uh, the spectrum is well uh, uh, studied and discovered uh, individually, uh, the model of cosmology uh, is based on uh, uh, two hypothet hypothetical substances which have not been directly uh, identified. Uh, and these are dark energy and dark matter. Uh, the difference between the two is just a question of state. Uh, uh, the dark energy has a question of state of, uh, that I will describe later. While dark matter is like matter, it has only uh, has zero pressure. Uh, is, is therefore, it can be described, uh, that's how it's called matter, like a non-relativistic uh, uh, particle, uh, which, however, is not part of the standard model, uh, because the standard model uh, uh, is only 5% uh, of, uh, uh, of the observable universe. And uh, it is uh, it interacts with uh, uh, with photons. It is luminous. Well, dark matter is called dark because it is non-luminous. Uh, so it is not uh, directly probed because it does not uh, uh, emit photons. Uh, however, it is deduced by uh, intermediate effect, uh, indirect effects. Uh, gravity or it, uh, in the uh, rotation of the, um, curves of the galaxies or through the global analysis of um, the uh, CMB fluctuations. And uh, constitutes about 25%. So it is natural to assume that since it is, uh, it has the uh, equation of state of the ma of matter, uh, that it is, perhaps due to a new stable particle beyond the standard model of particle physics, uh, which should be neutral and stable at cosmological distances, at the cosmological scales. So uh, one possibility is that the dark matter is, uh, uh, I mean, a stable, see this stable particle is characterized by two parameters. One is its mass and the other is uh, the interaction the strength of the interaction. Uh, so if we assume that the strength of the interaction is uh, 
similar to the standard model weak interactions, uh, then its mass should be in the TV region. And this is uh, what uh, uh, LHC tried until now to uh, find uh, after um, the, the Higgs discovery, uh, but so far it's un unsuccessful. Uh, and this uh, 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 searches of LHC uh, are uh, complementary to direct and indirect uh, uh, experiments on the sky trying to uh, detect uh, the dark matter. Uh, now we know that the dark matter, by varying the two parameters, the dark matter, the dark matter could range, uh, could be in a, uh, in a huge range of masses of energies, uh, starting from a very ultra, ultra light particle and going up to super heavy black holes. All these are in principle viable possibilities, which makes um, the search quite um, uh, involved and complicated to, uh, to do. Uh, so I, I would like now to pass to the to discuss the problem of scales, which appear when we put together particle physics and cosmology. So we know uh, so the, that's the energy unit. The standard model is uh, uh, around uh, a bit less than a TV, so it's uh, about hundred TV. Uh, and then we have the gravity, which is uh, which corresponds to the scale. This is uh, a Planck scale. Uh, 16 orders of magnitude higher than, uh, uh, than the electroweak scale. Uh, then there are uh, some other scales that enter from uh, the study of the physics. Uh, one uh, uh, is the, related to the extension of the standard model, uh, probably within the unification of all fundamental interactions. Uh, without gravity, for instance, starting from instance, and uh, an ingredient for, metal, for unification. And one possibility that has been a lot discussed uh, 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 theoretically, but also searched experimentally, is uh, supersymmetry, low energy supersymmetry. Supersymmetry postulates that every particle has a superpartner with a spin differed by half. Uh, it is a well-motivated proposal, uh, many decades now, back, and uh, it addresses uh, several open problems of the standard model, such as it provides naturally elementary scalars uh, that we know now that they exist uh, with the discovery of the Higgs particle. Uh, natural because uh, they are partners of the fermions that we know that exist, and therefore supersymmetry implies also elementary scalars. Uh, it realizes the unification of the three uh, standard model forces. Uh, while without supersymmetry, th they don't unify. Uh, assuming, of course, desert, that there is nothing between uh, the electroweak scale and the Planck scale. Uh, it also uh, provides a natural dark matter candidate, which is the lightest uh, supersymmetric particle, which becomes stable, assuming uh, R parity, which is uh, uh, which is possible in supersymmetry, but not necessary, of course. It it uh, helps to address the hierarchy problem, uh, which is uh, the discrepancy, the stability if you want, between the electroweak scale and the Grand Unification scale or the Planck scale. It predicts a light uh, uh, Higgs scalar, uh, lighter than 130 GV, uh, so it's consistent with its uh, uh, observation, experimental mass, which is 125. And uh, uh, also it, it 
soft, soften the behavior, the ultraviolet behavior of the theory. And uh, uh, in addition, it, it is uh, uh, an important ingredient of uh, string theory, which is a candidate of unification of uh, all interactions with gravity. All these are theoretical reasons. Uh, experimentally, however, there is no indication of uh, supersymmetry. Uh, all uh, searches of supersymmetry at LH, uh, LHC and uh, other experiments are negative for the moment. And uh, that's, uh, for instance, uh, uh, re relatively recent results from uh, Atlas. Uh, so these are various uh, processes in which one could find supersymmetric particles. Uh, this scale is one TV. And one sees even without reading uh, what is here, that uh, the uh, search is already bound to supersymmetry to be above the TV scale. However, not only, as we know, not only supersymmetry has not been discovered, but also any uh, uh, physics beyond the standard model. Uh, these are various uh, possibilities that have been uh, uh, discussed and postulated theoretically starting from extra dimensions to exotic fermions and so on. Uh, here you see the TV, one TV is here, 10 TV is there, uh, and the bounds become uh, already several, t um, several TV. So the conclusion is that there is no experimental indication of any uh, beyond the standard model physics. Uh, however, for theoretical reasons, it is uh, likely to be at some more fundamental level, such as uh, suggested by string theory. So that's uh, about the extension standard model. Then uh, we have uh, uh, the dark energy, which is uh, uh, indirectly uh, observed by uh, uh, cosmological observations. Uh, the, the dark energy in the simplest case is just a, a cosmological constant in the Einstein equations, which is uh, which has to be though very small, infinitesimally small. So uh, uh, the reason is that the cosmological constant, uh, when it is uh, interpreted as a matter, so when you put it on the other side of the equation of motion as an energy moment tensor, then it satisfies a, a qu an uh, equation of state, which is uh, which has a negative pressure equal to uh, in magnitude to the density. Uh, if uh, we leave the cosmological constant on this side of the on this side of the of the Einstein equations. Uh, the cosmological constant is a classical uh, parameter. It defines a classical length uh, of uh, uh, length to the minus two, like uh, the curvature uh, of space time. And this length can be deduced from observations, from the Hubble, the measurement of the Hubble parameter. Uh, and uh, it uh, coincides more or less it, with the size of the observable universe. Uh, so if you take it, uh, the mass, uh, a, a mass, uh, a massive particle, uh, a mass uh, and, uh, which has a, a wavelength to the size of the universe is very, is very, very light. On the other hand, uh, if uh, if we be agnostic whether it is a cosmological constant and we we'll just put it on the other side and we we'll interpret it as a density, uh, as a uh, dark energy, uh, then uh, uh, one has to divide lambda by the uh, uh, Newton's constant. Uh, this uh, has no this case uh, this magnet uh, this observable has no uh, uh, dimensions of length to the minus two. Uh, however, if we use uh, the Planck length, so the quantum st scale and uh, the velocity of light uh, that are treated to unity here, uh, then one finds uh, uh, a dimension which is uh, energy to the four uh, or length to the minus four. 
and then we can deduce another length which is very different from this one which, uh, which is much smaller and uh, which is 85 micrometers one could uh, wonder if uh, at this length scale uh, one could have modifications of newton's law uh, it is uh, uh, inconclusive for the moment because the Newton's law has been uh, uh, measured up to distances to about 50 uh, micrometers, which is precisely has the um, order of magnitude of um, the, dark, the dark energy length. So this is something that one should uh, keep in mind. Uh, the, in any case, that's the uh, the um, the, uh, the mass scale that I have put here, which is the milli electrovolt corresponds to a uh, wavelength of uh, 50 micrometers. Uh, then uh, uh, another sc uh, scale, uh, uh, which is related to uh, uh, another. Uh, physics that has been deduced from observations is a possible uh, inflation uh, that describes uh, uh, another accelerated expanding phase of, of our universe but with a value of a cosmological approximate value of a cosmological constant uh, much uh, bigger and different than that of uh, dark energy since the cosmological constant enters at least the uh, uh, in two eras uh, in the universe, one at early times and another at, uh, today. Uh, I'd like to elaborate a bit uh, on this. So if you consider the vacuum solutions uh, of equation of Einstein equations with a cosmological constant, then one finds uh, uh, a solution of maximal symmetry, uh, so-called the Sitter space-time, uh, that has precisely the same symmetry as flat space. It has 10 isometries. And these isometries form, uh, instead of the Poincare group of flat space, it form a group which is isomorphic to SO4-1. So it's a non-compact SO5. And uh, it can be uh, obtained, can be visualized as a hyperboloid from five dimensions, from an extra dimension, by imposing a condition which is... Uh, like the sphere, but with a negative uh, sign for the time direction. So it's a hyperboloid. And uh, the inverse radius of the sphere is uh, the Hubble constant. So because of the maximal symmetry, uh, the, Riemann, the, the only geometric, uh, there is just only one geometric quantity, which is the curvature. And uh, the Riemann tensor is expressed in terms of uh, the curvature or the Hubble constant in this way, in terms of the metric. And uh, the curvature is just determined by the cosmological constant. Uh, so this, uh, the, the Sitter space has uh, uh, several ways of representing it. Uh, um, graphically, it looks like that. Uh, so that is the time direction, uh, vertical. And this is the space direction, uh, horizontally. So if we, if we cut the space like this, the, along this black line, and we consider half of it, then this uh, uh, is called flat slicing. Uh, this has a representation as a Robertson Walker, uh, time dependent, with a scale factor which is uh, exponential, uh, which has an exponential dependence on time, uh, with an expansion rate, which is the Hubble constant. Uh, so, uh, in this case, one can see, one can identify easily the 10 isometries. Uh, the uh, three are the space translations, uh, three are the space rotations. Uh, one is the scale transformation, which corresponds to a time, tra time translation together with a scale uh, compensated by the scale. Uh, transform space of the space coordinates, the scale transformation, the scale coordinates. In a similar
killer waves, one can do three special conformal transformations of the space coordinates and absorb them uh, by corresponding um, uh, time um, translation. So one generates in this way the 10 isometries uh, of uh, uh, the city, uh, which can be seen in this uh, coordinate system. Uh, if, uh, if one takes the whole uh, space, uh, then uh, uh, the simplest uh, possibil uh, possibility is to consider uh, uh, the uh, closed slicing, which means at every instant of time, uh, the space forms a sphere uh, with a radius, which is uh, one over eight square times an, a, a scale factor, which depends uh, uh, with cosine hyperbolic on, uh, on time. There is also an open slicing with this uh, unique hyperbolic. I mean, since uh, uh, the sitter has uh, uh, the same isometry as flat space, it would be also uh, all, all this slicing uh, depend on time. So it may give, uh, it may confuse uh, that it's time dependent. However, there is another coordinate system which is uh, just space dependent, time independent. Uh, if you cut this, the, uh, this describes only one fourth of the space time, uh, which has this uh, uh, representation uh, uh, of the line element, uh, which looks like a black hole. Uh, however, there's no singularity here, but there is a, a horizon, uh, which is cosmological horizon, when uh, R is, uh, R is this, the three space, okay? Um, the radius uh, of the unit sphere, the uh, two sphere. So when uh, uh, R is equal to eight, to uh, one over eight to the the theta radius, then uh, the time and uh, space are interchanged, and this is precisely uh, cosmological horizon, which is analog to the horizon of black hole. Uh, now, uh, why uh, it enters in the, uh, obviously in, in the present universe, in case there is uh, uh, the dark energy, it is really a cosmological constant. Uh, when we wait long enough after a billion of years, uh, it will be dominated by the cosmological constant, therefore the space would be like the sitter space. On the other hand, uh, uh, the infl uh, inflation was also uh, postulates an approximate cosmological constant to explain uh, the problems in the uh, observable universe. And this problem is uh, the question why the universe looks very homogeneous and isotropic uh, and also spatially flat. Uh, and, uh, obvious. Uh, I mean, a reasonable uh, explanation would be if all the regions of the observable universe in the past was were causally connected. However, it seems that this uh, is not possible because in, in contradiction with Einstein equations, in other words, if we, if we uh, extrapolate the Einstein equ uh, equations in the past using the present Hubble uh, the present uh, uh, scale factor, how universe uh, expands uh, today, uh, then one finds that uh, the observable universe actually has a huge number of causally disconnected regions. And uh, that is precisely the problem. If the, in the past there were several disconnected regions, then why all these regions uh, uh, give the same, uh, look the same, and the universe uh, look homogeneous and isotropic. A possible explanation uh, was by postulating, it was a postulating the inflation. Uh, and this inflation proposal postulates that there was an exponentially expand, expanding period at early times in which uh, a small region of the universe was very small, became very fast, uh, exponentially large, 
uh, that you could, uh, could see in this coordinate system. Uh, and therefore it could include all the observable universe and explains the homogeneity in the isotropy, the flatness, since everything comes from the same uh, region in the past. Uh, for this explanation to work, it needs at least 50 to 60 E foldings of expansion uh, in order to uh, uh, explain the homogeneity of the hopeful, uh, to make all the uh, causal, uh, causal disconnected regions connected. Uh, it also, uh, uh, so that is how inflation was introduced, uh, but also uh, but, uh, soon later, uh, uh, it was realized that it can also predict the small anisotropies uh, from the slight deviation from from the sitter space, and in particular, to exp can explain uh, the temperature density fluctuations perturbations from these quantum fluctuations uh, that give rise to this um, picture. So uh, now, in order to, th that, this is how um, I mean mean uh, here approximate the city. Now, in practice, a way to uh, introduce this exponentially uh, expanding period uh, of inflation uh, is by uh, introducing a scalar field uh, that uh, drives the universe uh, expansion at early times. Uh, it has a potential like this. It has a region of the potential which is very flat. And therefore, in this region, uh, the, uh, since the field does not vary, uh, one can neglect the kinetic energy. And uh, the potential brings a cosmological constant, uh, which is the height of the potential. Uh, however, uh, after that, after that period, uh, the scalar field rolls down to the minimum, and this uh, corresponds to the actual uh, uh, universe today. So that's the uh, uh, model of inflation, which is, of course, a theoretical paradigm consistent with cosmological observations, as I said. Uh, but uh, we don't know if this uh, uh, phenomenological description uh, ha, uh, is fundamental. In other words, whether there is a fundamental field, uh, a scalar field, uh, which is called the inflaton, uh, that uh, dominates the universe uh, evolution uh, at early times, or it is an effective description of some uh, effective degrees of freedom. Uh, behind this, uh, behind the scheme. Uh, in any case, uh, that's uh, another interesting problem, which I mentioned here. And it introduces uh, another scale, which is a scale of inflation, uh, described by the height of the potential. Uh, and this kind of uh, uh, scale of inflation can be in principle anywhere between Planck scale and the TV scale. There are some constraints which uh, I will describe later on. So uh, the next question would be, are there these uh, scales uh, that appear to in the particle physics uh, and cosmology independent or there are connections between scales? between the scales. And this would be an interesting uh, uh, possibility uh, that be, be, uh, behind every of these scales, uh, the theory is not uh, independent, but there are connections. So in the rest of my talk, I will describe uh, a, a result of a pro uh, proposal that uh, uh, I put, uh, tried to put forward some uh, few years ago, uh, proposing a direct connection between the inflation scale and the supersymmetry breaking scale. Uh, so these are precisely 
the, the two notions that uh, have been introduced theoretically, uh, but we don't know their existence. We don't know the scale of supersymmetry breaking, and we don't know the scale of inflation. Uh, we don't know the structure of uh, 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 spectrum of supersymmetry, and we don't know uh, what is behind the inflaton, if it is a fundamental degree of freedom or not. So the proposal would be to uh, connect the two uh, by identifying the inflaton with a supersymmetric partner of uh, the Goldstone fermion of spontaneous symmetry, supersymmetry breaking. Uh, if supersymmetry is a global symmetry, then this symmetry has to be broken spontaneously because it is not observed in nature. And the spontaneous breaking of the symmetry brings uh, a, a Goldstone particle, uh, which uh, should be a fermion, uh, not a boson, because supersymmetry is a fermionic symmetry. Uh, and the proposal is that uh, the inflaton, which is a scalar, is a partner of this uh, uh, Goldstein, as it is called, this Goldstone fermion. In the presence of gravity, uh, supersymmetry becomes a global, uh, becomes a local symmetry, and therefore the Goldstone fermion is absorbed by the gauge boson of uh, the local supersymmetry. And this gauge boson of local supersymmetry is a gravitino, is the partner of graviton, which, spin, which has spin three half, and uh, which becomes massive when supersymmetry is spontaneously broken in the same way that uh, the W and Z uh, gauge bosons acquire masses from the spontaneous uh, uh, symmetry breaking of the electroweak symmetry. Uh, so the uh, the Goldstino provides the longitudinal spin one half helicity states of a massive gravitino. Uh, uh, however, uh, still is realized in uh, in nature even if the spontaneous breaking form. So this uh, identification uh, is still valid. So that's a proposal to identify the inflaton with the partner of the Goldstino. Uh, while we will try to accommodate uh, the observed vacuum energy without trying to without trying to uh, uh, explain it. Now, since uh, we combine supersymmetry with uh, uh, inflation, and therefore we go to supergravity. I'd like first to mention what are uh, the main difficulties and problems that one encounters when uh, one tries to implement uh, inflation in supergravity uh, and it's supersymmetry in general. So this comes from the fact that the inflaton uh, becomes part of uh, a supermultiplet. So it comes with uh, a fermion, which we say is the Goldstino, and uh, another scalar uh, because it is complexified. The simplest supermultiplet is uh, what is called chiral multiplet, is a chiral superfield that it is called, and it contains a vile fermion uh, and the scalar. Since the vile fermion contains uh, two helicity states, plus minus a half, the scalar has to be complex, and therefore the inflaton uh, should be uh, complexified if it comes as a partner of uh, a fermion. Now, what are the, uh, these are some of the problems that appear, many the main problems that appear uh, when uh, uh, try to uh, implement inflation in supersymmetry. The first uh, problem is to a uh, difficulty to satisfy uh, the slow roll condition. In other words, to find a, a region in the potential which uh, behaves, uh, uh, which is very flat, uh, in which characterized by the fact that the, the first and the second derivative are small compared to the, uh, the Sitter curvature. Uh, 
in particular, it is difficult to satisfy the, in a natural way, uh, th what is called the eta, these floor all conditions are uh, characterized by two parameters, one associated to the first derivative of the potential, which is called epsilon, and the other, which is associated to the second derivative of the potential, which is called eta. So a uh, uh, slow roll uh, means that the eta should be small, therefore the second derivative of the potential should be small. Uh, here I'm using Planck units, so Planck mass is, is put to one, or the Newton constant equal to eight pi. Uh, it turns out that uh, the, in supergravity, the scalar potential uh, has an exponential, uh, it's proportional to an exponent, exponential factor of this form, e to k, uh, where k is some uh, uh, function of uh, the inflaton, uh, which uh, defines the kinetic terms. Uh, if the kinetic terms are canonical, in other words, if the inflaton yeah, is a scalar field with canonical normalized kinetic terms, then the scalar potential, this which is called this function k, uh, should be uh, x x bar should be uh, quadratic. This implies that uh, start, uh, that if we take two derivatives here, uh, then we will find the the e to k again. So we'll find that eta, a contribution to eta, which is one plus extra terms, which come from the rest of the expression and which is uh, model dependent. So that's the first uh, problem, which, uh, uh, which is a fine tuning problem as one has to fine tune the inflaton potential. Uh, otherwise in supergravity, one gets a contribution to the slow roll parameter equal to one. Uh, by the way, uh, since I, I mentioned this, I open in parentheses, which I, I forgot to mention before, uh, and which is uh, uh, the, uh, this parenthesis is to go from supergravity to string theory, that the, uh, there have been uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, research of trying to find the Sitter solutions, uh, in particular in string theory and uh, or in supergravity. And uh, uh, all of the, uh, it, it turns out that this problem uh, is uh, hard and uh, non trivial. Uh, actually, in string theory, the vacuum uh, energy and the inflation models are related to the, is related to the model, the so called model stabilization problem, which means to find. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, stabilize all the various parameters of string theory. Uh, string theory is unique in 10 dimensions or 11 dimensions, which is uh, which, uh, with the dimensionality where, which is defined. However, when you compactify from 10 to four or from 11 to four, then uh, one finds a lot of parameters uh, and these parameters uh, correspond to vacuum expectation values of scalar fields that parameterize the compactification manifold. So you can imagine, for instance, a big metric and the various components of the metric are particular uh, scalar fields. If the manifold is more complete, there are much more scalar fields. Uh, these scalar fields parameterize the size of the value cycles of the compactification manifold or the shape of the compactification manifold or even the string coupling. So all these are param parameters. In supersymmetry, this parameter complexify, as I said before. Now at the low energy, uh, the, the low en uh, at the low energy couplings depends or depend on these parameters and therefore these are functions of the moduli. So this is the, uh, the name of the scalar fields are called moduli. Uh, if uh, uh, the moduli are massless, in other words, if these parameters are there uh, uh, and are determined, then obviously the theory is inconsistent because uh, there are extra long range forces. There is cosmological overproduction of these scalar fields and also would have seen effects in accelerators. 
Therefore, an outstanding problem in string theory is to fix the expectation values of these scalar fields and stabilize this module. In this way, we can avoid the experimental conflict and we can also be able to compute the low energy couplings. There are several uh, ways and propos uh, proposals to stabilize, to generate the potential, either preserving supersymmetry or after supersymmetry breaking, using either non perturbative effects or by turning on, uh, as it is called, fluxes. Fluxes are generalization of uh, magnetic fluxes for gauge potentials for other uh, uh, higher rank anti-symmetric tensors that exist in uh, string theory. So this uh, is related, uh, uh, the, uh, this problem, the stabilization problem is somehow related to find the vacuum uh, at the end where these moduli are stabilized and that the, the, the vacuum is the seed that has some positive uh, uh, expect, uh, some positive energy. The difficulty is to find the Sitter vacua in string theory in the supergravity led to a conjecture uh, that has been formulated by these people. Uh, and this conjecture restricts the first and the second derivative of the potential to be big, either positive for the first derivative in magnitude or uh, negative for the second derivative. To understand, uh, so this coefficient C and C prime are order positive, order one constants. Uh, to understand the meaning of this uh, conjecture, the first one uh, forbids any decider minimum uh, and maximum, any since uh, an extremum, the C the extremum implies that uh, uh, the, sec the first derivative of the potential should vanish. Uh, and therefore, this, uh, uh, this conjecture is not valid. Actually, in the, be uh, in the beginning, it was formulated only in this way, and it, it was soon found counterexamples. Therefore, it was implemented with a second constraint. So there is this OR here. Uh, where the second constraint is constrained on the second derivative. And uh, together, uh, these uh, uh, constraints uh, forbid the seated minima but allow maximum. So it is in principle consistent with this scheme uh, here, but not there, not today unless if the vacuum energy is zero. So, uh, in general, for inflation, like we discussed, uh, was discussing now, uh, the two conditions uh, together, they uh, restrict the slow roll conditions. And in general, they are uh, in contradiction with this, uh, uh, with, with the potential of this type. However, there are, these arguments are heuristic. Uh, the no, uh, quantum corrections are not taken into, afound, uh, into account. And in, in any case, there is an ongoing debate on the validity of, this, uh, uh, of these conjectures, which uh, I will not uh, discuss more. So I would just wanted just to mention it uh, because this is an active uh, uh, field of research. And going back to the uh, Sorry, to the inflation that I was discussing before. Uh, so uh, the, that was the, the first problem, uh, remind you of uh, um, uh, implementing inflation supergravity is the difficulty to satisfy the slow roll conditions, the eta condition. Uh, it turns out that uh, the, uh, there is a way to go around uh, uh, of this uh, uh, of, the, of this fine tuning problem by considering uh, non uh, canonically normalized uh, uh, scalar fields 
uh, however the price to pay for this in this case is that uh, uh, one needs uh, transplacking in initial conditions in other words uh, the inflaton should start with uh, initial conditions uh, which are uh, in which the field is large in Planck units and uh, in that case in other words that this approximation is not valid higher order corrections are important uh, in which case uh, the effective field theory description uh, is uh, is not valid uh, and uh, it is difficult to uh, justify why gravitational corrections do not uh, uh, do not um, break the assumption about the form of the Keller potential which uh, uh, which guarantees a slower condition. Uh, a third problem has to do with a uh, pseudo scalar with, a, with an extra scalar uh, which uh, complexifies the inflaton. It's either pseudo scalar if the, if the inflaton is scalar or the other way around. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, companion, scalar companion of the inflaton, should be stabilized. Uh, otherwise, would enter in the inflation and would uh, uh, would mix up the, uh, uh, the the properties of inflation. And finally, there are uh, uh, problems related to the model stabilization, the sitter vacuum that I mentioned before, and so on. Uh, a particular. Uh, framework in which this problem arises is uh, in the so-called Starobinsky model of inflation, uh, which uh, consists of uh, adding uh, just an R-square term in the Einstein action without an explicit scalar. This R-square term uh, can be uh, described uh, equivalently by introducing a Lagrange multiplier, which becomes a field by going to the Einstein frame uh, to an extra scalar field, which you can understand it also in the form of the R square, because an R square, the R square brings an extra scalar field, which is if you want the trace of the graviton. And uh, this scalar field, once we go to canonically normalized kinetic term, uh, has a potential of this type. Uh, this potential seems to be favored by the experimental data. So these are the um, uh, Planck data. Uh, that's the, uh, dense, the spectral index versus the tensor to scalar ratio. This is the prediction of uh, the R square uh, of the uh, Starobinsky model, which is just uh, uh, in the heart of uh, the experimental observations while everything else uh, is further. Uh, so this uh, uh, Starobinsky model of inflation can be in principle supersymmetrized by uh, uh, introducing a Lagrange uh, multiplier which is now uh, a super field. Actually, one needs, for uh, technical reasons, one needs two Lagrange multipliers. So one needs to introduce two chiral super fields. One contains the inflaton and the other contains the Goldstino. It turns out that the superfield that contain, contains the Goldstino uh, has a, a scalar partner which uh, destabilizes inflation. And therefore, uh, one has to uh, modify uh, this simple supersymmetrization in a way that makes uh, this uh, uh, scalar field massive and does not mess up inflation. Uh, one way to parameterize this uh, 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 these modifications is to ignore uh, uh, this scalar, this uh, Goldstein superfield by uh, taking the limit 
where it's uh, the mass of the scalar pattern goes to infinity, in which case supersymmetry becomes uh, nonlinear realized. And then uh, one obtains a scalar potential, which uh, is exactly the scalar potential of uh, the Starobinsky, this is the blue part. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, scalar potential of the axion, so a pseudo scalar, which complexifies the inflaton. In this way, one sees that there is no eta, eta problem. However, as in the Starobinsky model, there is a problem with initial conditions because it, requ it requires super Planckian values for phi to be bigger than one at Planck units uh, in order to, uh, uh, to make uh, the inflation successful. Uh, so this uh, uh, is an example how one can uh, make, uh, can avoid the, um, uh, the problem that I mentioned of the slow roll conditions, but then one brings the problem with transplacian initial uh, values for phi. Uh, which for supergravity uh, in gravity in general is uh, difficult to justify why these scalar fields should have exactly this potential. And there, there are not there are no uh, cor gravitational corrections that uh, destabilize inflation. However, apart from this problem, the, the pseudo scalar the pseudo scalar uh, indeed becomes it's heavier than the inflaton during inflation, so it decouples. Uh, and also a nice uh, property is that uh, the inflation scale uh, M, which is related to the strength of the R square uh, by this relation, uh, is independent from the supersymmetry breaking scale, uh, which is uh, related to the uh, is the decay constant of the of the Goldstein, which you don't see it here. Uh, however, so this uh, Starobinsky model is just an example how these problems appear, and uh, the fact that uh, uh, here we have two different superfields that the supersymmetry breaking uh, that the Goldstein superfield is independent of the uh, inflaton superfield. So what we would like to do uh, is to relate this to, uh, as I said, by uh, postulating that uh, uh, the inflaton becomes a super partner of the Goldstein. The, uh, th this implies that uh, the, uh, the theory should have a special properties, in particular the super potential uh, has a, a linear piece, and uh, uh, this piece exactly cancels uh, the contribution one from uh, these extra terms. In other words, when you assume that uh, the uh, the inflaton uh, X contains the Goldstino, then these extra terms have a particular uh, form. Uh, that cancel this uh, unity, and when the inflaton is canonically normalized, then eta is, is zero. So it's uh, it's uh, uh, the problem disappears. Uh, that's what I say here. When the superpotential is uh, the superpotential is linear, to, uh, then the the uh, the Goldstein superfield. Then there is no other problem. Uh, then, uh, in order to guarantee that uh, this property, that the superpotential is linear, then one has to invoke a symmetry. Uh, and this symmetry is an R symmetry, which guarantees that uh, uh, this property. Uh, this symmetry, if it was, if it was global, then uh, there would be a Goldstone boson. In other words, the pseudo scalar companion of the instanton would be massless. And this uh, would, be, uh, would bring a phenomenological problems. However, if this R symmetry, if this global symmetry is gauged, then uh, the, uh, should the 
pseudoscalar component of the inflaton is absorbed by the uh, extra U1 R symmetry, gate symmetry, it becomes massive at, at the same time where the, when the Goldstino uh, is absorbed by the Gravitino and becomes massive. And in this way, and is left over just with a one uh, real scalar degree of freedom, which is the inflaton. And, uh, 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 and then uh, should have a potential with eta vanishes. So what we would like to obtain a potential of this type uh, uh, for, this, for the inflaton, for the scalar field. And uh, we will postulate that uh, we will request that uh, the inflation happens around the maximum uh, with uh, 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 with a second derivative, which is not vanishing, but it is small. And this can come by a correction to the kinetic term uh, of this form. Uh, with a coefficient which is positive and which is small uh, because it's a correction suppressed by the Planck scale here. Uh, so the, the correction to the kinetic term can, can uh, directly relate it to uh, the uh, uh, smallness of the eta parameter. And uh, moreover, since the inflation arises around the maximum of the potential, uh, the, uh, there is a small field inflation and they would, will not need large initial conditions uh, to uh, which, uh, uh, destabilize the validity of the effective field theory. Finally, the vacuum energy at the, at the minimum can be tuned between uh, gravitational and gauge cont contributions in the uh, scalar potential here. Uh, the gravitational contributions to the scalar potential uh, are negative, while the gauge contributions are positive, and this can be can be tuned to cancel uh, uh, each other, so that can obtain a, a minimum with a, a small cosmological constant, positive cosmological constant at the uh, uh, vacuum energy. The slower parameters are, are given here. So the uh, second derivative of the potential is directly related to this correction that justifies why it's small. Uh, the first derivative of the potential when around the origin, uh, here rho is the magnitude of x of um, the inflaton is essentially the expectation value of the inflaton around the origin. Uh, and it turns out that uh, this, uh, pa this uh, pa parameter, the, the first derivative is much smaller than the second derivative because it's eta squared, so it's the second derivative square times the displacement uh, of, the uh, of the inflaton, which is less than one. So this parameter is much less than eta. Then infl uh, inflation will start at some initial condition around the origin where the R symmetry, the symmetry is restored. And uh, uh, it will stop when uh, the inflation starts rolling down. And uh, the parameter becomes order one, the slow roll parameter becomes order one. One can compute the, uh, easily the number of efforts. Uh, by this formula. And it turns out that uh, uh, because there is this factor here, one over eta, and from the uh, Planck data, eta is directly related to the spectral index and takes this value from experiment. Uh, one finds already that one over eta is about 50. Uh, and this is precisely the number of efforts that uh, we need in order to explain uh, the flatness and uh, uh, of the universe. Uh, so 
this rho n the rho, uh, star is the ratio of the initial of, uh, towards the end, the end uh, over the uh, final value of the field, which uh, uh, can be of order one uh, in a logarithmic scale. So the, uh, the, the main message here is that by just by this uh, uh, postulate, one finds a natural uh, framework for inflation in supergravity, super uh, in which the slow roll condition is satisfied and uh, can obtain the right uh, number of efforts related to the spectral index. Uh, now, more precisely, the, the CMB and isotropies are characterized by density flex, uh, flex perturbations by an amplitude, which is uh, uh, fixed by the overall uh, scale of the potential and the spectral index uh, uh, which has this value while primi primordial gravitational waves have not been observed and the ratio of uh, the ratio of uh, over uh, the pr pr primordial uh, gravitational waves over scalar perturbations must be less than uh, 0 0.015 now, these are the predictions of this model. Uh, at a, of course, it's fixed by the observations. Then uh, one obtains the right number of efaults. Uh, and uh, however, the first derivative is not fixed. We know that it is small. And uh, one obtains that um, uh, the R, which is the tensor to scalar uh, ratio, primordial perturbations must be less than 10 to the minus four, uh, which is consistent with um, uh, the bound, experimental bound. And the scale of, of inflation must be less than 10 to the 12 GV. One could also study in the same way, so the minimum, uh, in other words, if one assumes that the minimum is far from the maximum, of course, one cannot study it in perturbations around the origin. However, uh, one could uh, ask the question whether it is possible to, stu to study uh, uh, cases in which the minimum is near the maximum, uh, so that uh, uh, keeping, the, of course, the results of inflation, the predictions of inflation, in a way that can be studied also in perturbation theory? The answer is yes, but then one needs a, an extra correction to uh, the scalar potential, uh, which is uh, cubic in the, uh, besides the quadratic term that we studied. Actually, there are uh, explicit examples within field theory and supergravity, in other words, microscopic models that give rise to this effective theory. For instance, one model is based on uh, a variation of Fagliopoulos Falle model, where, uh, which is uh, based on a U1 R symmetry and not an ordinary U1. Uh, and there are several other interesting uh, questions here. Since my time uh, is uh, it's over, I just uh, fl um, flash the conclusions. I try to describe uh, the origin of the very different scales that appear in the particle physics and cosmology and uh, relate uh, the uh, scale of supersymmetry breaking, whose role in breaking scale in natural is not uh, uh, clarified, is an open question, together with uh, uh, the origin of, inflate, of inflation. Uh, based on which guarantees that uh, with supersymmetry that it is uh, another scalar field, uh, a fundamental scalar field like the Higgs scalar that uh, has been already discovered. Uh, and uh, I, I described a general class of models in which infla uh, can be called as uh, uh, inflation for supersymmetry breaking by identifying the inflato with the uh, super partner of the gold studio. So, thank you very much. And sorry that I was a bit late. 
thank you. So uh, thank you for this uh, very interesting and detailed colloquium. And uh, now if there are any questions from the audience related to this talk or on the topic of, of this talk, please do not hesitate to, to ask. Hello, uh, hello, Ignatius. This is Radu Constanze speaking. Hello. hello. It, it is so nice to be together, and uh, it's so pity that we cannot be on site. How somehow? Uh, thank you for uh, this wonderful uh, lecture. Uh, I do not know. I, I am not a specialist. Uh, in uh, this topic, but uh, uh, I, I would like to ask you, uh, do you think that uh, uh, the uh, discovery of the gravitational waves, gravitational waves, and uh, the new idea of uh, uh, somehow uh, randomly existence of the random background of gravitational waves uh, influence somehow uh, the standard model or uh, uh, this is one idea and another one do you think that you mean the standard uh, model of inflation yes yes uh, and 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 do you think that uh, this idea you presented uh, the idea of a supersymmetry of inflaton, including of a partner of uh, inflaton in the supersymmetry context. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, we are close to to discover somehow the particle attached to dark matter? Okay, the, concerning the first question, uh, the, for the moment, the discovery of, of um, uh, gravitational waves are, uh, ca are coming, uh, do not have cosmologi uh, cosmological nature. They come from collisions of black holes. Uh, and therefore, we cannot yet get uh, conclusions or uh, restrict cosmological models. Uh, however, since gravitational waves have been discovered, uh, and now there are more and more experiments and searches, there is a possibility that uh, uh, there are um, uh, uh, observations of waves in a different in different frequencies that could either directly probe be of primordial origin that would be of course uh, wonderful uh, or uh, in frequencies in which it could uh, influence or it could constrain uh, models of inflation basically after uh, reheating recombination uh, but okay, for the moment, there is no, uh, th there's no constraint on that, but it opens, the, their discovery opens a new era that could also, of, of, of astronomy, but could, this new era of astronomy could also be, uh, could uh, also have cosmological uh, uh, implications. Uh, the second question uh, was about dark matter. No, dark matter is, uh, is not directly related. It's a different, um, uh, uh, it's more, uh, I would say, uh, uh, okay, unless if dark matter uh, has gravitational origin based on modified gravity, which is, uh, of course, is not excluded, but it is in general difficult to satisfy uh, uh, all observations by, modif by modifying gravity, by simple model of modifying gravity. 
uh, then the most natural uh, interpretation is the new particle, as I said, uh, which should be stable on cosmological distances, and therefore this particle is directly uh, affects uh, and is related to to the particle physics uh, and not to. Uh, uh, of course, this particle should produ should be produced after inflation, uh, and the models of uh, 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 galaxy formation and so on uh, are connected. But there is no direct uh, there is no direct consequence. It's uh, there is no direct connection. Dark matter is a is a particle with uh, dark energy. Is energy. Thank you. Uh, please, if there are more questions. Uh, yes, uh, Nevin, I think. Okay, thank you. Ignatius, okay. uh, tell me what happens with the, with the uh, inflaton and Goldstein after the end of the inflation? Uh, after the end of the inflation, one, one needs uh, uh, to uh, a specific model of particle physics. Uh, we had already uh, uh, made a possible, uh, uh, in, a, in a recent work, uh, implementation, uh, co uh, sorry, uh, um, a coupling of the, of the supersymmetric standard model with uh, the, um, uh, this model of inflation uh, in the case where supersymmetry is linearly realized. And uh, it, we found that it is possible. It is not the only possibility, but uh, the, uh, the model that we discussed uh, had um, a supersymmetry breaking scale, which is high close to the scale of inflation. And, uh, but still the, the uh, lightest supersymmetric particle could be dark matter candidate. And uh, uh, although it could, it could be very heavy. And now there may be other possibilities. I guess one qu the main question is what are the constraints on uh, the uh, observable supersymmetry breaking scale in the standard model sector and the inflation scale. In other words, how much these two scales can be different. This is something that I'm uh, uh, currently trying to understand, but I, I don't have any results yet. Okay, thanks. Any other questions, please? I would have one, I mean, a couple of short questions. Once again, thanks Ignatius for the seminar and for all that. Um, so first is a quite general question about how, uh, is there still some changes mechanism to keep original minimal supersymmetric model after uh, the results, negative results of LHC? This is one question. The second question, having in mind the, the results of Planck and, and all other results, uh, can it put some constraints of the mass of Goldstino and other possible inflaton coming from the supersymmetry breaking? Uh, and there are two further questions. First, I did not uh, understand quite, maybe I didn't follow it very, very carefully, why inflaton somehow suppress or forbids uh, the slow wrong condition? This is the third one. And the fourth one, maybe I will re remind later on that. I'm free, it's, it's enough for a, for a while. <laughs> but I have to remember, no, start from the first one, what's on? I will try to remind you. Yes, please. Can you just tell me uh, one word for the, the first one to remind to? Uh, 
after the negative results of LHC, ah, yes, yes, yes. The status uh, of uh, yeah, minimal. Yeah. No, the low energy minimal. supersymmetry. I think the possibility of low energy supersymmetry is not yet. Uh, we cannot say that it is excluded because LHC has not yet. Uh, uh, explore the full parameter space of uh, the, the minimal supersymmetric standard model. Uh, in particular, there is a correlation, if you want, between uh, the observation of the mass of the Higgs, the correction to the mass of the Higgs from um, uh, the scalar superpartners of uh, the top and uh, the mass of Gluino and this parameter space, there is still room in this parameter space. So uh, it is not uh, it is not excluded for the moment. It is not even clear that uh, even the high luminosity LHC uh, will be able to uh, explore the full parameter space of the minimal supersymmetric standard model. So despite the fact that uh, uh, supersymmetry, low energy supersymmetry becomes more and more unnatural. Uh, experimental is not yet uh, uh, excluded. Uh, the, the second, the, the second, the second was uh, uh, can uh, you have a model or couple of models with Gulstino and etc as an influenton uh, from, from the Planck mission and many other uh, results there are some constraints about the mass of Gulstino and other uh, no, supersymmetrical partners as I said the Gulstino is part of the gravity plays the role of the longitudinal components of the gravitino so the, by mass of Gulstino you mean the mass of the gravitino okay I said oh, this and this then, uh, no, the like, spectra of the particles, the spectra of the particles. There are constraints, uh, basically based on the production of the gravitino in some region of parameters of the parameter of the mass, which is uh, at the uh, uh, at the TV uh, scale. But scale. if gra but if the uh, gravitino is either uh, light or uh, heavy, heavier than TV, then uh, there are no constraints from this assuming of course there are assumptions also that could be uh, on the production that could uh, that could be very well uh, overcome in particular models but uh, okay so the the answer is yes there are limits but uh, these limits are not uh, very strict. you are you are fine with these limits at the moment uh, the third was just more technical, might be. Uh, at one of your slides, you write, uh, it was written that uh, inflaton forbids slow roll condition. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me share the screen. Excuse me. I didn't catch that, that, that point. Uh, one moment, because I had to uh, to share the screen. Not only to share the screen, but to, yeah, to, do to find the, the the slide. No, no, to skip. Uh, uh, okay. No. Yeah, here it is. The reason is that uh, the, the, the scalar potential is propor is supergravity is proportional to e to the scalar potential. Okay. And the scalar potential is quadratic for a canonically normalized inflaton. Okay. So if you take two derivatives of the scalar of the scalar potential, and you hit the two derivatives k, mm -hmm. then you find that the second derivative of the potential is proportional to the potential itself. Okay. With coefficient one, mm -hmm. because the canonical normalized field has coefficient uh -huh. one. Okay. So, so it means that is you obtain the contribution one. to eta, which is one. Well, it's already bigger than one. Equal to one plus it, extra term. 
Okay, which is a with, that is a positive one. Uh, well, positive or negative here doesn't mean much. It means that I mean you have one, a contribution one, and you must cancel the one. Okay. And this cancellation should be so it means that uh, it's model dependent because the rest of the terms depend on the theory. So what I said is that if the uh, the um, inflaton is a partner of the Golstino, then the superpotential is linear, has a linear term. So take a superpotential which is linear because the, uh, the, the F term, which is the, the derivative of the superpotential is constant, no? That's, okay. that's what it means that supersymmetry is pronouncedly broken. Uh, then one finds that uh, with a linear superpotential, this X, there is another contribution here, which is minus one and the eta vanishes. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the basic observation that uh, if uh, the inflaton is partner of the, of the Golstino, then the superpotential is linear and then uh, the eta vanishes. Uh, okay, but I think on the next slide or one of the next slides, it was written that, that inflaton forbids slow roll condition. So slow roll condition does not exist or what? Ah, no, uh, you, perhaps you meant this slide? This one, this one. Yeah, yeah, this is about the swamp plan. Uh, <laughs> this, this is that uh, if you ask, these are the conjectures that uh, these people uh, uh, postulated, no? Okay. Now, if you if you are, if you postulate these conjectures, this conjecture that restrict the first and the second derivative of the potential. Okay. And putting together, uh, they are in contradiction with a slow roll, because C and C prime are of order one. Okay. Okay. But uh, okay, I don't say I say that these conjectures. There is a debate. And debate. These conjectures. Uh, I mean, personally, I, I have a counter example in string theory, taking into account, uh, take into account co quantum corrections. Uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't use these conjectures after all. Okay, okay. So that's somehow in parallel, let's say, with the main line of the, yeah. of the talk. Yeah. Uh, and if you want, I have the, the last question, which somehow I think is correlated with what Nevin asked in a sense, it's a continuation of that. What about reheating in, in your model? Yeah, what I said is that in order to talk about reheating, uh, you must uh, talk about particle physics. Okay, so you must uh, couple this model of inflation that I mentioned here. So, yeah, this model of inflation with a standard model. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, uh, we have already, uh, we have already an example in which we couple this model of inflation with a supersymmetric, with a minimal supersymmetric standard model, with a high scale of supersymmetric breaking, in which the heating temperature is high. I remember ten to the eight GV or something like that, uh, and uh, the supersymmetric breaking scale is high. All super partners are high. But uh, the still, it contains a dark matter candidate, which is, uh, of course, cannot be produced in LHC because it has a high mass. But it could be detected in uh, uh, direct and indirect uh, dark matter experiments. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. However, I don't exclude, I, th I believe that there are models in which uh, the low energy supersymmetry breaking uh, scale of supersymmetry breaking can be smaller than the scale of inflation. It's not the simplest one that uh, we studied, but uh, I'm trying to investigate it now. Okay. Thanks. So thank you again very much, Professor Antoniadis, and uh, thank everyone who asked questions. So if there are no more questions, Thank you for joining and
see you at the next edition. And if anyone else has anything to say, please. I really hope uh, to have, uh, of course, the meeting in Belgrade in uh, September, but uh, maybe the conference in Romania too. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to predict somehow, but uh, I hope, uh, Ignatius, to see you again uh, in Romania. Bona fide. Mulțumesc, Radu. Thank you for okay. everything. Thank you, everybody. So, hopefully see you in one month. See you. Okay. Thank you. Also, bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, everybody.